Hello and welcome to Theology Matters. This is Dr. John Clark. And today we want to continue our study on looking at the five men uh, in 1 Corinthians 2 and 3. This is a, a, a sub-study of our larger study on biblical distinctions. And uh, as I mentioned last week, there are, uh, are really only four of these men specifically mentioned in 1 Corinthians 2 and 3, but the fifth one is implied and often taught elsewhere in Scripture. And so last week we covered uh, the natural man, which uh, simply put is is an unbeliever, somebody who's unsaved uh, with zero spiritual assets. And um, their biggest need, uh, simply put, is to be born again. They don't need to become a better dad, a better uh, husband. I mean, all those things might be true. They don't need to quit drinking. They don't need to quit smoking. Uh, the, their biggest and greatest need is to believe the gospel and to be saved and be born again. And then we talked about, well, what happens when somebody's born again, when the Spirit of God works in the life of convicting uh, and drawing an unbeliever? Because we looked at the natural man, and one of the things that the, the Scriptures teach in verse 14 of 1 Corinthians 2 is that not only do they not receive the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. In other words, uh, he he can't even understand spiritual truth. He doesn't have the capability. And so that, that ministry of the Spirit of God drawing and convicting him is so key in, in opening a window, if you will, of insider opportunity for an unsaved person to believe the gospel. And um, once they do believe the gospel, they become what the scriptures call a babe in Christ. They're born into the family. And we see that in 1 Corinthians 3, 1. I, and I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. And so uh, this person is is basically describing a newborn baby, either physically or spiritually. Um, and in this case, we're talking about a spiritual birth, somebody who has been born again, and they're described as a babe in Christ. Now, it doesn't matter what age they are. They could they could still be a child or they could be an 80-year-old, uh, 85-year-old person. They would still be described as a babe in Christ because their birth, uh, spiritual birth in time has just occurred or has been recent. And so this is a saved person and their spiritual assets are the same spiritual assets that each one of us have when we're saved. They're blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies, in Christ Jesus. That's what Ephesians 1, 3 says. One of those blessings in particular is the indwelling Holy Spirit. Now that's very telling, especially in our passage in 1 Corinthians 2 and 3, because it indicates now that they have the capacity and the ability to understand spiritual truth. Because verse 12 tells us in chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, for what purpose? Well, that word that gives us a purpose, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. And so another blessing uh, that the that the babe in Christ receives is that indwelling spirit of God and the ability to understand spiritual truth. Uh, an additional blessing is that as natural babies, just as natural babies, they have a natural craving for the milk of the word of God. And we read about that in First Peter 2.2. 2. So there's this, this hunger, this initial hunger uh, to grow and to learn more. And so First Peter 2.2 2 says this, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And so there's this there's this time frame, um, especially for babies, where they need uh, certain amounts of milk and they need certain amounts of growth in order to grow uh, in a healthy manner. And and the same is true spiritually for these babes in Christ. So although they're fully equipped with everything, they've got every spiritual asset that they could ever possibly have the moment that they're born again. Due to lack of time and exposure to the Word of God. They are not in an immediate situation to receive the meat of the word. And that's what uh, 1 Corinthians 3 is going to go on to say, that that he could, he, you know, by the time that Paul was teaching them, they should have been able to receive more than just milk um, because of the time frame that had passed, but they had not been responding to the word of God and they had remained in a carnal state. In fact, look at 1 Corinthians 3, 2, it says, I fed you with milk and not with solid food for until now you were not able to receive it and even now you are still not able for you are still carnal 
And then he goes on to describe their carnality. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? And so uh, babes in Christ, there, there's an expectation even um, that, that due to lack of time and exposure, that there's a, there's a time period where they're not going to be ready to receive the meat of the word, and that's okay. But if time goes on, and, and they don't grow up, then that would be a problem. Now, some of the characteristics of babes in Christ is uh, typically they're brand new to the faith. They're in, in need of appropriate nourishment, uh, i.e. milk, and they're in need of more mature guidance and leading, which we would call uh, discipleship or training, uh, further teaching. And so this is basically, uh, as referred to by Paul, this is a young believer who has not yet had time to grow into maturity. This babe in Christ is brand new to the faith and it's in need of appropriate nourishment. He's in, he or she is in need of the milk of the word of God. And so at first, you know, oftentimes new believers, babes in Christ may seem fleshly or worldly because of not knowing the Bible and yet having a consistent walk by means of the spirit. And so, uh, you know, oftentimes they still have, uh, you know, worldly viewpoint in the way that they handle problems, in the way that they they respond to trials, in the way that they respond to difficulties in their life, they oftentimes resort to uh, the manner and means by which they've handled everything in the past, whether that's yelling, screaming, manipulating, <laughs> crying, whatever whatever that might be, quitting. Um, they, they take a worldly uh, and fleshly viewpoint to uh, the trials and difficulties of life. Uh, unfortunately, there doesn't exist an automatic download of truth with immediate understanding and experience. This this takes time and exposure to the word of God to learn of all the resources that we possess in Christ and how to utilize them. And so the babe in Christ is in need of more mature guidance and leading. Uh, in, one, in one phrase, they need to be discipled. This is why uh, Jesus' great commission to us in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, the, the command is to disciple. And the, the idea behind the command is how do you disciple? Well, you you get them to publicly identify with Jesus Christ and his message through water baptism, and then you go on teaching them. And so although it's perfectly acceptable and expected for a babe in Christ to show signs of immaturity, it is not right to expect or accept continued immaturity over the course of time. In fact, we get kind of the goal stated in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14 and 15, of the teaching of the word of God. It says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. And so uh, again, there's a there's a time element involved in the baby in Christ where it's, it's acceptable, it's understandable that they would show signs of immaturity, they would show signs of a lack of uh, of growth or a lack of ability to handle certain truth. Um, but over time, continued immaturity over the course of time indicates another problem, which we'll get to as we look at the next man. And so this is, and this is really what Paul's concern is, uh, not only with the Corinthian church, but also the, it's the writer of Hebrews' concern for the Jerusalem church um, years later, as we go to Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 and 13, he writes this, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full age. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And so what is the greatest need for the babe in Christ? They need to grow on a steady diet of the word of God. They need to learn of the resources they possess in Jesus Christ. And they need to be encouraged in simple responses of faith in their daily life. And that is uh, what their biggest need is. And this is why 2 Peter 3.18 encourages and commands believers to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, stunted growth causing believers to remain spiritually immature is an all too common and repeated occurrence. Again, the babe in Christ needs a steady diet of the word of God. And just like with an infant, the, the, the um, 
solidity of the food needs to progress as truth is received and understood. Because they're going to sin and fail, they need to be taught the importance of fellowship with the Lord. They need to be taught that he's made a way possible to be restored through uh, to fellowship through confession of sin. They need to be uh, regularly taught and emphasized regarding the resources they possess in Jesus Christ. So they're not tempted to look to everything else in this world that will try to substitute uh, for Jesus Christ when needs arise. Some of those substitutions are human philosophy, legalism, mysticism, asceticism, uh, any kind of human reliance strategies for spiritual growth. And so the baby in Christ uh, needs to be encouraged in simple responses of faith in their daily life. And they need to be shown or walk through how this looks. If they don't, it leads to this third category. Babes in Christ are designed uh, to grow. and um, But when they don't grow, when they flounder in immaturity, they become carnal. And thus, they don't become spiritual. And so we'll look at carnality uh, next time. We'll look at that as kind of our fourth man. But the, the natural progression is to go from a natural man to a babe in Christ, and then to start growing spiritually. And so we want to look at the spiritual man next. And in 1 Corinthians 2, 14 and 15, uh, we read this about the spiritual man. 1 Corinthians 2, 14 through 15, which we know 14, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So that's our unsaved person. But he who is spiritual, he who's been born again, and spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. And so when we look at the word spiritual, it's the Greek word pneumatikos. And again, pneuma means spirit. Uh, Ikos, that suffix, means the dominating factor. And so this is a person who's governed by the Spirit of God. Uh, they're not governed by man's fallen nature. And so the context indicates that the spiritual man is a person uh, who is governed by the Spirit of God. And thus, it indicates that this person is one who possesses the Spirit of God. In fact, in verse 14, it says that um, that, th- that the things, uh, that the spiritual, um, excuse me, going back to verse 14, that the natural man cannot know things that are spiritual because they are spiritually discerned. And, and that's actually the same word translated judges and judged in verse 15. And so the implication is that although the natural man cannot accurately discern spiritual truth, the one who possesses the Spirit of God and the one who's governed by the Spirit of God can indeed discern spiritual truth. In fact, Paul includes himself among the spiritual by saying, we have the mind of Christ in verse 16. And so again, who is the spiritual man? Well, this is a believer. This is somebody who has been born again. Uh, it means they're saved. In fact, they are described as a, uh, the fact that they're described as spiritual indicates that they're a forever child of God. And so again, as we've said, one must first possess the spirit of God to even have the chance to be considered spiritual or able to discern spiritual truth. The natural man could never be described this way, no matter how religious or moral they are. Now, what are the spiritual assets of a spiritual man? Well, it's the same as the babe in Christ. They possess all spiritual blessings in Christ, in the heavenlies, as Ephesians 1, 3 says, one of those blessings is obviously the indwelling Holy Spirit. And as it relates to this passage, um, this this believer uh, is governed or controlled by the Spirit of God, and thus they can discern spiritual truth. So what that also indicates is that this is a believer who understands how to be restored to fellowship with the Lord through confession of sin, as mentioned in 1 John 1, 9. And they take advantage of that resource. This is how they are restored uh, to a spiritual state of being where they're being controlled and governed by the Spirit of God. So when this believer confesses their known sins, they are spiritual in that moment, meaning they're in fellowship with God. The babe in Christ and the carnal Christian uh, and the maturing Christian, they all become spiritual the moment they confess their known sins. Hopefully, this believer learns how to now remain in fellowship or walk by means of the Spirit. And so the concept of spirituality is a moment in time, and we'll talk more about that, but it's a moment in time event when your known sins are confessed and you're relying upon the Spirit of God, occupied with Jesus Christ, and the Spirit of God is governing your mind, your will, and your emotions. <music> 
We'll look more at this next time.